So let's move on to our next speaker. Uh, Helg Vasmoot is a professor in the Department of Early Childhood Education at Mercy College in the United States. Among his research interests are early education policy, as well as the history of and postmodern perspectives on early education. He is a founding member of Cultures of Early Childhood Education, an international research network that's published globalization, transformation and cultures in early childhood education and care, reconceptualization and comparison in 2019. Helga's research on Friedrich Froebel's kindergarten pedagogy and its transformation has led to the publication of a monograph titled Froebel's Pedagogy of Kindergarten and Play, Modifications in Germany and the United States. He is currently working on a new Froebel biography, which will be published in 2023 by Bloomsbury. Professor Vasmut is joining us from New York. Uh, welcome along to explore the relevance of a Fribellian approach to early education and the importance of young children's relationships with nature in kindergartens and early education systems today. Helga, welcome along. I hope you've got something for us to make at the end as well for your presentation. Yeah, thanks so much for having me uh, uh, and that I can be here. Um, and Connie, thanks so much for your uh, inspiring talk that you just gave. Uh, I think what you said at the end, um, Froebel would have really, really liked that um, when you spoke about that kid should be grounded and uh, not consume too much because uh, so when he uh, started his educational institute in, in Keilhau in 1817, so he, he wanted to move as very as far as possible from, from the cities because he thought like the cities have a very destructive uh, impact on children. So he wanted to, to that's why he moved to Keilhau, which is basically uh, in nowhere. And then the kids had to harvest their own food they had to find potatoes uh, and they had to use fruits and, and everything and he also didn't want them to um, to drink coffee and use sugar because he thought like oh it will only weaken and spoil the kids which led to uh, a big first scandal when he brought his uh, wife uh, Wilhelmine to Keilhau because she wanted to drink coffee and uh, and have sugar and the kids were very annoyed that oh now they are drinking coffee but well okay that's another story um, and I won't talk about that uh, today so what I will do today and let me get my um, presentation okay so um then um let me let me start it i always hate that to do that via yeah, zoom okay so um when when sasha and i talked about what i could do today and um <clears throat> as you could hear in the beginning i i wrote a book uh, that was published two years ago i think it was three no, two years before the pandemic started i'm writing a biography about Froebel right now with two colleagues in germany uh, will be written in uh, in english um, and we are very excited about that so the problem is always if you are so much into something and you have thought about uh, a person or uh, or a philosophy for such a long time it's it's very difficult to just focused on uh, something that is easy to present in just 20 minutes. So Sasha and I spoke about that a little bit, what I could do, uh, and I will focus on, uh, on a few things today. So I will start by talking about um, why uh, Furbel matters. So why should we even care about reading him today? Then I will talk about um, three of his key ideas of his um, pedagogy that I think are important and relevant today. And then finally, I come back to the question why Furbel matters today. So. <clears throat> Why does Froebel matter? And I mean, that's a question, of course, for me as a historian, um, I'm hearing that all the time. So why do you even care about what he wrote? So Froebel, uh, if, if you are honest, so when he died, he was a dime a dozen, you know, like he was not very important. Not many people know about him. He was definitely not famous. And even the kindergarten, there were like maybe 18 kindergartens at this time. Uh, and the kindergarten was banned in, in, in Prussia, which was the biggest state in, in, in German, Germany at this time. So uh, it's not that he was very successful at this time, you know, but now we're still talking about it. So today is his 240th birthday. We are celebrating that. Uh, we're still speaking of kindergartens. Uh, the the Fribble Trust speaks of the Fribellian fundamentals and principles, which have really influenced a lot of wonderful things that have happened over the last years. So the question is, why does Fribble still matter and why would we read him, uh, why would, should we still read him today? And um, that's something I would like to start with to talk about um, because I have the feeling not a lot of people are reading Fribble anymore. You know, it's maybe popular to refer to him, uh, but most people don't really read him. Uh, or if they read them, they're normally just reading uh, his most famous work, which is Education of Man. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons why this this is the case, and I would like to talk that a little bit about that because it, it helps to understand um, why Froebel is still important and why it's also difficult, but why why it can also be inspiring. So to read Froebel is is a thing that's not always fun. So you can see on the right, 
um, that's the original manuscript of uh, Education of Man, as you can find it in the in the archives of the of the Fruvel Museum in Bad Blankenburg. And I always love this picture because you can see it's it's impossible to to read him because you can't read his high, high, handwriting anymore today. Uh, but even if it's if there it's uh, if you can find transcripts and everything, of course you can find that. It's still very difficult to read them to read him today. And why is it so? So. He has a really difficult writing style, and it's it's almost impossible to read for him. Although he has very long, complicated thoughts that start somewhere, go in one sentence over the whole page to somewhere something else, and then they come back to his initial idea. So it's very, very difficult to read him, and it's not always fun. So you really need to spend a lot of time doing that. Then, especially if we talk about the kindergarten, though there is no systematic um, writing, so there is no book on kindergarten pedagogy. There are a lot of writings that that talk about his ideas. And I will go back to that a little bit. Um, but it's again, it's it's very complicated to find these sorts um, if you want to read them. Then he is also a very ambiguous educational thinker. So some people sometimes are saying you can find everything you want in Froebel. And while I don't fully agree with that, but it's it is possible to find a lot of different things because depending on to whom he was writing or what was the purpose of his writings, he could write about different things, even if I believe there are some key ideas that can be found in all of his writings. Um, then his thinking is, is very foreign today. So, I mean, he lived um, more than 150 years ago uh, in a time that's normally called German idealism, which is very, very different on how we think about um, the world today. He was also a very religious person, had with his own, with his own uh, kind of religiosity, uh, which again is very foreign for many of us, uh, and but because all of his all of his thinking, all of his educational ideas are embedded in this worldview, and you can't really understand that without it. It's again something you really need to try to 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 think and to understand what he wanted to say. And then the problem for the people who can't read him in the original German is many of the translations are outdated, and then even more complicated, many of the important works are not translated. Well, that makes it very difficult if you are interested in Froebel. Uh, to, to read him and to learn something about him and to get inspired by him. Um, still, I think like it is important to do that if you are interested in Froebel. Um, I think it's important to read his ideas, to think about it, uh, and then to think about, okay, what does it mean in today's world? Yeah. So what can we do with Froebel today? Why does it still matter? But to do that, I think it is important that we start uh, to read him first. Uh, and as I said, because there is no real one book, um, what is very interesting, but also very difficult, because not all of it is translated, are his letters and his pamphlets. So I often think it's much more enriching and inspiring to read these kind of things instead of always referring to Education of Man, which he wrote in 1826 when he was still in, in, in uh, Keilhau, and which is basically his school pedagogy. While his kindergarten pedagogy can be found in the, in the pamphlets he, he started to publish, on the beginning of the 1840s and also in his letters, and especially his letters are really fascinating. So when Froebel moved away from Keilhau to Switzerland, uh, he was there on his own. He had a lot of, of quarrels with his family, with his associates, uh, a lot of disputes, and uh, he always felt misunderstood. And then he started to write these very, very long letters in which he explained his thinking and also what he did. Uh, and these are fascinating to, re to read still today, even if it's, again, very complicated. So these kind of things are very, very interesting when we talk about his kindergarten, kindergarten pedagogy. And what I will do now in the next, uh, next minutes that I have, <coughs> I will talk about some of the key ideas. And to give you an idea how Fribble was thinking, I will always use a few quotes which are from this time, from the 1840s and 1850s, uh, different letters, different pamphlets, to give you an idea and ho hopefully to somehow inspire you to, to read a little bit of him. So these are the ideas that can be found in, in, throughout his writings. Um, and I think they are also similar what the, what the Froebel Trust has, um, has uh, or is considering as, as the principles of Froebelian principles. And I want to talk about three things today. So the first thing I want to talk is because we have this topic is talking about engagement with nature. So <clears throat> one of the quotes when he's talking about nature uh, is the following. So for, and he's writing that um, uh, in 1851 to uh, Barnhorn, uh, uh, the, the Countess Marnholz Bülow, which, which was one of, uh, she was one of the most influential supporters. So after his death, she was almost single-handedly responsible for lifting the ban and that the, um, the kindergarten idea was spreading throughout the world. And Froebel met her two years earlier in 1849 when he was in, 
in a spa in Bad Liebenstein. And she heard uh, the people talking about the old fool uh, of Bad Liebenstein who is uh, playing with children, which was at this time, of course, like, why is an old man playing with children? Uh, and so she met him there and she got uh, inspired by him uh, and was fascinated. And he wrote uh, this letter to her. It's one of the last very long letters he wrote uh, one year before he died. Uh, and it's a very interesting letter because it was written to her and she used it to create her own ideas and her own understanding of Froebel and this, this way it has been very influential. So he's writing, the human being has three significant tasks that need to be completed. They have to mediate nature with God, to mediate humanity, human beings with God, and to mediate humanity, human beings with nature. And it's a very typical Froebel quote because he's always using this, this trinity thinking. He always uses three things that are somehow connected. And this is his whole idea, what he sometimes also calls life unification, that people need to connect it and to be united with other people, with nature, and of course, also with God. So this is his, his whole big idea of what uh, people have to do in their lives. And that's of course also true for the kindergarten. So he developed the kindergarten not so much to just take care of children, but to really help them to develop this kind of life unification. And that's why he's saying the children will be educated in kindergarten as life unified. The name kindergarten guarantees that this also happens as nature unified. So children need to start to be unified with nature. And I will talk a little bit later what that means. And the last one is, so why is it important? So why is nature important? And Fruebel is saying, being in nature is important because in working in and caring for nature, the child files himself throughout his activity and help as a link of the entire creation. And the idea that you are a link of the entire creation is something that's also very important in Fruebel. It's one of his big ideas that you have to, everything is connected, everything needs to be united. Okay, and he wrote that in the letter to, um, to the Countess Brunswick, another of his really great letters from 1842. Uh, so if you have a chance to read this one, he's really developing his whole uh, kindergarten pedagogy and play pedagogy in, in this letter, which is a very interesting reading. So what does it mean? So this idea that Froebel had that you have to live in, uh, in life unification, to do that he developed in the last 17 years of his life uh, three areas of activities for kindergarten. And one is the whole of the gifts and occupations, which is still very famous until today. The second one are the moving games. And the third part is the garden care or gardening. So gardening was a very, very important thing for him. And you can see here on the picture on the right, um, <coughs> so that is uh, um, the first uh, kindergarten in Bad Blankenburg. So down there, the, the building, that's where the museum is today, and there, up there he had his own little garden. And he wanted the, kid, the children to have their own little garden, their own kindergarten, uh, their own little space in this garden where they can plant something, where they can work with nature. So nature for Fruebel uh, was really, really an essential thing uh, to achieve life unification. Yeah, it was necessary. So that's why he said like, okay, children need to live in nature, this nature, because otherwise they can't achieve um, this goal that he had. Yeah? This means that children should not just learn about nature, uh, they need to learn through nature. Yeah? Uh, as I said earlier, this was also very important in Kyle Howe, where the, the children learned through nature, in nature, all the time, uh, doing what we would call today projects or field excursions and all these kind of things. So he really thought like that by being in nature, you can understand how the world works and how everything is connected. And this is very important. The other thing why nature is important for young children is because they learn responsibility. So they need to care for something, for nature. They need to, um, to, to, to learn to be responsible for what they're doing. And the last thing that I think is very important was respect for nature. So by, um, by being with nature, in nature all the time. You learn to respect nature, that nature is not something that human beings owe, that they can do whatever they want uh, with this kind of with, with nature, but they have to respect it. <clears throat> so this is one of the key ideas. The second one is that I want to talk is of course play, because that's what Bert Film is uh, famous for. And um, I'm talking about real play not these kind of things that you can find in, in early childhood education these days, uh, sometimes called playful learning or play-based learning, which is sometimes, unfortunately, just like disguised, boring things that are talk joyful and should be fun, but it's not really play. So that's not what um, Fruebel is talking about. And so for him, play, of course, it's not a pastime, never just a frivolity, but rather continuous learning, but one end around and in life itself. Yeah. 
so play is not just recess it's not just something you do that you can relax or so no it's really learning and that's i think is a big idea that we are still talking about today that for will develop that play is really learning so because play is so important, it needs to be the main activity of children in kindergarten or in early childhood uh, all the time. Because if the children are playing, it occupies the child at all times simultaneously in the totality of his activity as well as in the various directions of the activity as simultaneously acting, feeling, and thinking being. You can see again the trinity of his thinking, the active feeling and thinking being. Uh, and what he's talking about here is that, okay, play really helps for its holistic education, it's a well-rounded development of the children and it's supporting this. So on the right, you can see the gifts, of course, and why is play so important. So as I just said, like the children, young children really need to learn in and through play. Yeah? They need to be self-active. They are needs the ones to, to be active in the, in the kind of things they're doing. Play should come out of themselves and they need to have the time to play, uh, to develop. So if children are playing, uh, it allows a holistic and well-rounded learning and development. And I guess many of us who are working on child education know that. Yeah? If children have a, the chance to really play, it's develop, it supports their, their whole development, uh, not only cognitive development, emotional development, of course, physical development. So it is really holistic, um, holistic learning. So why is this play so important? And I think that is one of, of, of Fruible's big ideas. So if you are playing, so what you are doing is, yeah, you're supporting uh, your cognitive development, for example, but what is really happening is that children are enabled to construct their own, uh, so their own self, self as part of the world. Yeah? So they are able to con construct who they are, who we are in this world, and at the same time, they are understanding uh, how this world works and our place in this world. So they are making meaning of the world and that's why all children want to play all the time because they want to understand the world and they also want to craft their own place in this world. And play really helps it and that is why what, what Fruible showed us is to, to help the children to develop and to construct this kind of self what they need to do on their own. Yeah, that's why they have to construct it. It's something that only the child can do. Yeah? So I think it is really a, a timeless idea but until today it's very often misunderstood. So when we talk about play in early childhood education today, very often we are not talking about what Fruible meant when we talk about play. But I really think it is a timeless idea that's worth to consider until today and to, to fight for and to advocate for. And the last thing I want to talk about is the dignity of the child. Well, that's an idea that, that can be found throughout many, um, many texts of Fruible, even if he's not always talking explicitly about that. So this, quote I think is a really good one. It's again from the letter to Manholz Bülow. So the primary goal of kindergarten is and must be the education of the human being to be a human being. So again, Froebel had many ways how he expressed this idea when he was talking about life unification, for example. But the idea is really that education need to enable uh, children to become human, human beings in the full meaning of this word. Yeah. Um, so this is his big idea. And what does this idea mean? So children are human beings, yeah, and first and foremost, and therefore they need to be treated and respected as human beings, which might sound like today like, yeah, okay, we know that um, even I think it's still something we should remind us all the time. But at this time, of course, this was, of course, a, a very unique idea that you wanted to treat children as human beings and thought they have their own rights, their own needs. So each child is an autonomous person with dignity, interests, needs and rights. Uh, again, I think that's a very important idea we need to advocate for until today. Related to this thought is, of course, that children have the right to childhood. And we know all these days it's a lot of talking about like we need to prepare them for school, we need to prepare them for college, we need to prepare them for their career and so on and so on. Um, and I think that's a very important idea for everyone uh, who's working in this field is to, to always have in mind, yeah, but children also have the right to be children. They have the right to live now and in the now and they have a right to childhood. And also they have a right to uh, humane education. So it's not about just training and everything and just like memorizing things. No, it needs really to be a real education. And the last thing is, so, and again, that's something that Fruible emphasized all the time. 
This is true for all children, not only for the ones who are privileged, the ones who can afford such an education. Every child has a right to such an education. So I talked very, very briefly about these uh, three things, uh, and I would like to finish by talking about, like again, why does frugal matter today? So why does he matter and why is it still worth thinking about him? So I don't think that frugal can give us answers to the questions we have. Yeah, sometimes people are expecting, oh, I should just read uh, the history, or if I read Froebel, he will tell me uh, what, what I need to do. And I mean, Froebel can't help in this way. So he can't tell us what we need to do today. Um, and I don't want to say that his principles are not, not can't be used today or that they can't be applied and implemented in, in modern settings. Of course, it can be done. And the, the great work that the Froebel Trust is doing uh, basically shows that, that you can do that today. But why I think that it's really worth it to read and to think with Froebel is because it helps to somehow critically question the current status quo of early childhood education and to think critically about all what we are doing with our children, uh, especially in this landscape that is shaped by neoliberal uh, ideas. So I think it helps to, to ask different kind of questions, you know, to ask like, why are we actually doing that? Uh, should we do something else? So instead of asking, for example, how can I make my kid school ready? Yeah, the question should be like, why are we even talking about that? Why shouldn't we, why should we make kids school ready? Is it really important or what is important? So I think it helps to ask different kind of questions. Yeah, and in this sense, I think, which is very important these days, it helps to reimagine alternatives to think about, okay, how can we live with our children? How can we raise our children? How can we educate our children in educational settings? Uh, and I think that's very important. And I think in this way, Froebel can really help us until today. And that's why he met us today, because he helps us to think differently about what we are doing and also maybe helps us to understand that we maybe shouldn't be doing what we're doing with our children and that we need to think about different ways. I don't know how much time I have, but I have the feeling uh, I used my time. Uh, as I said, like, okay, this was very, very brief. So if you're interested in learning more about it, uh, I published this book and my uh, publisher gave me a discount today for this meeting. So if you are interested, feel free to purchase it with a discount. And of course, if you have any questions about Fruible, I'm always happy to talk with you uh, via email on Twitter or anything, and I would, would love to speak with you. Okay, so thanks so much. I think I, I'm, I'm over my time anyway, right? <laughs>